Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Okay, so as I was making up uh, a few seconds ago before uh, doing this video, um, I came to remember, are you sitting comfortably? Now let's watch with mother. I'm not quite sure whether or not that you're in the UK, uh, but many years ago, back in the late 60s and certainly early 70s, there was uh, something on the television called, on BBC One, uh, called Watch With Mother, um, which were uh, a number of children's programmes, uh, I think probably for less than children five years of age or under. And it was sort of kind of deemed, I think the BBC was trying to encourage mothers to, to be with children over lunchtime or something or other. So it's called Watch With Mother. And it started with, are you sitting comfortably? <clears throat> anyway, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, are you sitting comfortably? Um, and in this uh, quick video today, we're going to carry on this little series. Uh, of course, tomorrow is D-Day uh, or Termination Day for um, VMware Skyline Advisor Pro 3.5. Um, as you will know in the last couple of videos that I've actually basically done with goodbye to Skyline Advisor Pro and a um, couple of videos that we did on the deployment of Area Operations uh, Manager. Uh, then we did a video on how to upgrade uh, 8.16 to 8.18. And because the findings delivered by Area Operations Manager, which is a pseudo replacement for the findings in Skyline Advisor Pro. Uh, you also need to have uh, ARIA operations for logs installed as well. So that's what we're going to do today in this video. And that if you've been following, um, again, the same thing applies. No idea why. Um, I can't download 8.18 uh, of what is called VMware vRealize logs because that was the old name. Now it's ARIA. Uh, I can't download 8.18. I can only download 8.16. Uh, but I can download the patch for 8.18. So in exactly the same way that we did with Area Operations Manager deployment, uh, we installed 8.16. And then I did another video in upgrading 8.18. So we're going to do exactly the same here with this. So today's video is all about the deployment of um, the initial um, appliance. So um, I'm already at the deploy OBS screen. I'm pretty sure by now I don't have to show you uh, how to find that within VMware vCenter server. And as we found yesterday, when we tried to deploy uh, Operations Manager, we were getting some really strange error message, um, hosting wrong state or some load of nonsense. Uh, so we had to resort basically to deploying uh, direct via the ESXi server, via the, the host client. Um, hoping we don't have to do that today, but who knows? This is really what Hancock's VMware Half Hour is all about. You know, I'm not going to chop and cut these videos to show you that everything in the real world uh, just performs nicely. Uh, they don't. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to click next. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, um, personal thing really uh, I actually basically like to keep the full build number in the inventory description so I'm going to select our EE data center followed by next I'm going to select our EE cluster uh, but I actually basically want to drop it on this box because it's actually basically got a little bit more memory followed by next um, and this is where yesterday when we went through all the palava of um, giving it a host name and an IP address and uh, credentials, et cetera, we follow by next, and then we start again this really weird error message. So we'll see whether or not we get the same today. So yes, I'm going to accept the license agreement. Um, I'm going to say extra small um, because, you know, this is only a three host environment in this uh, EE lab. So I'm going to say extra small. There's not really any need to have. Um, uh, I'm going to deploy it to our NFS uh, VM network static, you know, it, to be honest, you really, if you've deployed one of these appliances from VMware once, they really are all the same. They don't differ a great deal. Um, so initial root password. So yesterday uh, I had a little bit of an issue with this um, because although I'd actually typed in the password twice, 
it was the wrong password. So I'm, I'm just actually going to check that. Um, yeah, just checking that I have actually got the case uh, case right today. OK, host name. So I'm just going to basically call it log. Um, I know what I'm going to call it area uh, insight or area logs. We'll call it area dash logs one. Area dash logs one. Um, default gateway. Uh, in fact, actually, let's just go with DHCP on all this. Um, it does say if blank DHCP, if blank DHCP, if blank. OK, um, so I'm not going to bother with putting any IP addresses in there. We'll just let it be DHCP uh, followed by finish. And this is where yesterday we actually basically saw this really weird error message that turned around and said that the host was in some really weird. There we go. Look, doing exactly the same thing again. So let's go direct to the host client uh, like I did before. Um, so I'm going to do a 6 i 3 uh, It could be a problem in the lab here with that particular machine. Um, I have seen it get into difficulty before. Uh, so I'm just going to log in here and um, we're going to go virtual machines and we're going to go creep registered and deploy via OVA. OK, so I'm um, going to deploy it uh, again, exactly the same. Uh, next, agree. Next, um, extra small, bin, power on automatically. Um, Initial root password. Interesting, it doesn't actually say anything about DHCP this time. Um, so let's go to area uh, logs one. Um, OK, I'm going to take a chance here, not filling in any of this in and just clicking next and see whether or not that it will just assume a DHCP IP address, uh, followed by finish. And um, again, we don't seem to have any problem at all deploying this OVF. Um, so whether or not there is something wrong with HA, uh, DRS, um, vCenter server 8.03b, um, mysterious this one um so we're just waiting for it to upload all the disks and then it will start up and we'll see whether or not that it does actually basically get an ip address uh, via dhcp so that's deployed successfully uh, and we're back in the vmware vcenter server view and we're just waiting for the machine to um to boot up um okay so it's telling me no network detected please check the network configuration so that suggests to me already that deploying via host directly doesn't do dhcp um so we're going to have to typically um redo uh, the deployment but actually specify some ip addresses uh so just let me kick off and do that again so as we wait with bated breath this time, uh, so I've redeployed it again um, via the host client uh, connected directly to ESXi003. Uh, this time I actually basically gave it all the network parameters that were required. So hopefully when it initializes this time, it's not basically going to give us an error message that says uh, no network detected. Um, however, I have seen... Um, various issues um, when deploying via ESXi directly and deploying via vCenter server. Uh, I think there is most definitely um, parameters of the OVF are interpreted differently. OK, so I'm looking here at uh, uh, the VMware tools that's actually running and reporting back to VMware vSphere here, vCenter server. And it is actually basically telling me that it's got 138.53, which is the IP address that I gave it. Um, so I'm just going to check whether or not that there is actually any network connectivity. And there is. I can actually basically ping 138.53. So that clearly was the problem. 
uh, although DHCP is an option if you deploy to VMware vCenter server. Um, if you do deploy it directly, you've got to feed it the parameters because it does look as if um, it will uh, function as a DHCP when it's deployed. So, um, okay, it's obviously picked up from DNS as well there, a very old host name, we'll correct that uh, later. Um, that no longer exists, that server anymore. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's actually basically connect direct to that IP address. Okay, here we are, uh, VMware Area Operations for Logs. Uh, interesting, although the file name actually basically refers to it as VMware vRealize uh, or Log Insight, uh, it does actually basically say there VMware Area Operations for Logs. Okay, so let's click uh, Next. Um, so again, we can run many of these uh, in a cluster, and we do because we tend to find that one particular server uh, or appliance uh, gets overwhelmed with the number of logs that it's supposed to digest. Uh, but anyway, so we're not going to join an existing deployment. We don't have an existing deployment. We're going to start a new deployment. So I'm going to click Start New Deployment and wait for it to start doing its thing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pause some of these so that we don't basically just sit here uh, waiting for spinny things to happen. Okay, um, so email address and a new password. Okay, so need to be careful with the password because the last time that we entered a password, um, although it confirmed it twice, um, it didn't accept it, and I had to reset it. Um, email um i'm not going to bother with an email at the moment save and continue uh license key uh okay i need to go and fetch a license key just one moment that as a vmware v expert i've just gone off to the vmware v expert uh, portal and just grabbed a license key which is nfr um however um you can join vmug advantage and uh, also obtain license keys uh, for trialing and writing blogs about these particular products. Um, okay, um, not gonna basically fill in any email notifications, but you can do if you require. So I'm gonna click save and continue. Uh, it's now asking me basically to fill in some, uh, I didn't even know that VMware actually basically had um, uh, NTP servers. Um, anyway, we're gonna use the own servers here in the in the lab so i'm gonna test those i'm uh, just checking that i've actually got them right da, 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 da. this may take up 20 seconds per server okay succeeded so i'm going to click save and continue uh, again, that's just asking for uh, email information or email server. So I'm just going to get save and continue. Uh, we're going to do it. We're going to use this VMware self sign certificate. All done. And I'm going to click finish. And hopefully uh, we can we can log in or it already has actually logged me in as admin. Um, you know, this is the danger. Um, let me just actually basically complete this and then we'll log out um, just in case. So we're going to configure a vSphere integration. Um, so again, it's going to ask us for our vCenter server. So that's vCenter 8A. And we're going to use the um, SSO account uh, to which I'm going to go and fetch its password. From here, using LastPass. And I'm going to basically just test connection. Um, OK, it's coming up an entrusted certificate. So I'm just going to accept, accept and see if that passes. Test successful, so I'm basically going to click save. And now it's actually basically configuring 
um, ESXi hosts for vCenter 8A uh, to start sending log information um, and ingesting logs from this environment. Now, just as a recap, you know, the reason that we're doing this is because one of the prerequisites for findings in operations management, operations manager, um, is that you have uh, area operation for logs as well. So configuration completed successfully. So it might be too early um, to look at the dashboard, look at my dashboards. Uh, OK, so we are we are getting. Um, I'm going to have a little look at exploring logs. Then we are getting log information at the moment. Um, that's actually coming in from ESXi 03, 001, 002. So that's that's all working. So with our successful deployment of VMware area operation for logs on our EE lab, um, then that's it for this particular video. So I told you that it was going to be a 16 minute short one and come back for the next video, um, which is where I show you very quickly how we're going to upgrade um, VMware area operation for logs from 8.16 uh, to 8.18. So thanks very much for watching and goodbye.